Welcome to the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax deferral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy and using a proven tax deferral strategy, such as the Deferred Sales Trust is the best way for you to exit highly appreciated cryptocurrency, primary homes, businesses, and other highly appreciated assets. Hey, I'm your host, Brett Swartz. In each episode, I am joined by some of the best real estate, financial wealth, business, and sometimes cryptocurrency blockchain experts in the world where they share their ideas, deal stories, and inspiration. So together we can make complex tax referral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable. Hey, I'm excited about our next guest. Um, he focuses on operations, risk management, and overall strategy at the growth of his firm. Um, by the way, it's called uh, Plutus21. Um, and uh, he's focused on all things um, investing and especially alternative strategies across multi uh, multiple um, asset types. And in fact, he has been involved as a principal investor in deals totaling over $50 million on behalf of his partners and family capital. Growing up in Pakistan, he saw the effects of economic and political instability firsthand. And given this experience, uh, he has, has motivated him to understand the many problems faced by the developing world and is confident that blockchain technology will be an important part of the solutions. Please welcome to show with me, Hamiz Awan. Hey, Hamiz, how are you today, sir? I'm great. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Excellent. And for our listeners getting to know you for the first time, would you give us a little bit more about your background and your current focus? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, born and raised in Karachi, Pakistan, now living in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we're trying our best to make sense of the alternative asset landscape um, and invest on behalf of our, uh, our of our partners in alternative strategies such as you know blockchain assets and, and other venture capital strategies. Excellent. And by the way, you can learn more about um, Hamiz Awan at Plutus21Capital.com. That's P-L-U-T-U-S-21.com. And so, Hamiz, before we dive into our topic today, which is strategic investing in block, blockchain technology, um, I want to take one other step back and help our listeners to get to know you a little bit better. So perhaps, perhaps when you're growing up back in your, um, you know, your grade school days or high school days, um, you know, I, I want you to go back to those days. I believe we've all been given certain gifts, right? And these gifts have been a, be given to us to be a blessing and help to others. Some people call these strengths and superpowers. You know, I believe they're God-given gifts, and they're, they're here to be help us to help our people. So I'm curious, what are those one or two gifts that you believe you were given, and how does that help how you help and bless people today? No, absolutely. I, I think I got the entrepreneurship bug early on. So I started uh, my first small business with my brother. Uh, we were 10, 12 years old. Um, and we kind of never looked back since then. And uh, we really think that a lot of the problems in the world can really be solved by putting people behind, um, you know, really, really tough problems and, and getting them to think about that every day and work towards those solutions. And most of the times these solutions are coming from startups. So I'm a big believer in the social change that startups can bring uh, to entire countries, entire societies. And uh, I've been a big, uh, you know, startup founder myself, a uh, big supporter of startups and, and now an investor in startups. Excellent. Love that. So being an entrepreneur and belief in the spirit of someone starting something from scratch and solving the world's problems. Is that a fair summary? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. So now let's dive right into the uh, kind of the secret behind uh, Plutus 21 Capital and strategic investing in blockchain technology. So, um, Hamiz, what's the biggest secret or the first step to understanding how to strategically invest in blockchain, blockchain technology? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, nothing we talk about is investment advice, but we see the blockchain space uh, from a very different lens than uh, most people do, um, I believe. And I think a lot of the conversation that happens uh, around dinner tables or even out around investment committee boardrooms uh, is all focused on the price of different blockchain assets. And I think that's the wrong approach. Um, you know, all the conversations you'll have are whether Bitcoin's $40,000 today or $20,000 today. And that really doesn't make a difference because if you are in a secular trend, if you're in a long term adoption trend, then short term price movements are quite irrelevant to the long term story. So I believe that either you understand the long term adoption trend of blockchain technology or you don't. And if you don't understand it and don't appreciate it, then you should not be participating in the market. Um, it's highly volatile, um, very dangerous if you don't understand what you're doing. Um, and so you should only do it because you understand the long term disruption that the technology can have. OK, let me see if I encapsulate that. So it's first thing is shifting the conversation and the mindset from price versus versus trends and versus understanding the 
business or the value behind the blockchain technology? Is that a fair summary? That's absolutely it. Yep. Okay. So let me ask you the second question. So, well, actually, let's just go to the second secret, right? So what's the next step? So once you shift from focusing on price to understanding the, the, the value and the business and the, and, and what it's going to do now, what's the second part to, to investing in, in, in uh, blockchain technology? Yeah. So we believe that the number one, um, you know, thing that we've learned over the last few years of doing this is that adoption is everything. Um, it, that's true even for, you know, traditional technology companies. Uh, the reason Uber has value is not because they have the best application or the best technology. It's because they have the most users and the most drivers using their platform. Um, that kind of uh, competitive advantage is even more pronounced on a blockchain network because the technology is open source. So anybody can copy paste the technology and, and use it as their own. But what, what is your main durable competitive advantage is not how great your technology is, but, but how many users you have and how many sticky users keep coming back. Got it. So it's, a, it's the adoption. And what has Uber been able to do um, to attract more users and more people using their platform? Yeah, uh, you know, Uber has uh, done a great job at sort of uh, going across the world, going against regulation in many spaces and showing users the value of their platform. Uh, they've created jobs in times when countries needed jobs, like the COVID, uh, you know, the, the pandemic. Uh, they have given users access to uh, services that they never thought was possible. And one of the important things to understand about companies like Uber is people usually underestimate them throughout their lives. Uh, when, when people started thinking about Uber as an investment, they probably thought, hey, you know, the total addressable market here is the size of the taxi market. But what ended up happening was because Uber made that transportation easier, cheaper, and more accessible, they actually expanded the market for taxis. People that never took taxis before take Ubers now. Right. And, and so a lot of times it's, it's very easy to sort of uh, forget that these markets are not just the traditional markets, but a lot of times when you add technology to it, you actually expand the market far beyond uh, the traditional competition. Yeah, that makes sense. I think of something like even like a blockbuster versus Netflix, right? I imagine there's more people watching and consuming content today because of the ease of access and how friendly it is. And if, um, so that's that's growing the pie versus just taking from the pie. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair summary so far? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so now let's apply it to blockchain technology, right? So we have we have understanding that the actual business and the technology mm -hmm. behind it and the, this, the value it brings to the everyday person or, or business or whatever. Second thing is the adoption, so helping the users and the people understand and actually use it. So what would be the third step to this? Yeah, the third step uh, would be to understand that when you like a company like Netflix or you like a company like Tesla, uh, there's very obvious assets that you can buy to sort of back that company and bet on their success. Uh, but that's not so simple in the blockchain space. Uh, blockchain assets are unique and all of them are different from each other. There's no set standard. So there, it's not necessarily the case if, for example, you believe in the Ethereum network, uh, you believe that that's going to get adopted further. It's not necessarily the case that you go buy the Ethereum token and that gives you exposure to the growth of the Ethereum network. Some of those digital assets are really strongly connected with the underlying growth of the business, but many of them are actually very loosely connected to the underlying growth of the business. And so you could be absolutely right about the growth of the business, but see no value being passed through to the actual uh, digital asset involved. So you cannot take the structure and the relationship between the company and the digital asset for granted. You have to really dig deep to understand whether there's any real economic relationship at all. Got it. Interesting. So, um, yeah, a lot there, right? It's it's not it's not a uh, you can't just put blockchain in a box. I think is what you're saying, right? And you've got to really underwrite and look at it on an individual basis, right? You, mm -hmm. Just because you're buying the coin doesn't necessarily you're supporting the blockchain technology. Is that a fair summary? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So now let's dive into Plutus Twenty One. By the way, Plutus Twenty One uh, dot com. Plutus Twenty One dot com, um, and it says responsible strategic investing in blockchain technology. Plutus 21 Capital is a multi-strategy investment firm focused on blockchain infrastructure investments. So how do your customers or clients work with you? Kind of give us a play-by-play -play there. 
Um, yeah, you know, from from us as a company, we look like any other investment firm. It's the investments that we make that are, you know, non-traditional and on the frontier of tech. Um, so we have a very typical uh, investment firm business model. You know, we pool capital together from investors that want exposure to these uh, trends and adoption cycles, and then we invest that capital on their behalf. Um, so from that perspective, we're very traditional. Uh, what we want to really focus on is infrastructure investments because we feel that the the underlying marketplaces, the protocols, um, you know, the platforms that make this entire ecosystem run are the best way to get exposure. And the reason we feel that way is, you know, instead of investing in individual applications, if you were to invest in the app store instead, you would get exposure to the thousands and thousands of applications that are on the app store. So we like to take uh, the really broad and diversified uh, exposure to the ecosystem instead of betting on individual applications of the technology. Okay, interesting. Maybe you can give us an example of a, a recent or a past investment that um, that you saw, what you liked about it, and maybe what the general outcome, if you could share some of those things with us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, again, like not investment advice at all, but one of the infrastructure, very important pieces of infrastructure in this space is the Ethereum network. The Ethereum network is essentially a blockchain that uh, innovators and entrepreneurs from around the world can come and build on top of. So instead of them having to create their own blockchain, they have a pl plug and play solution called the Ethereum network. It already has users, already has validators, and you just come and build your application on top of it. And so what the, the reason that we really liked Ethereum was because it was the king in terms of adoption, but it was getting beat down unnecessarily because of a general bear market in the, in the ecosystem. Uh, we continue to see rising adoption, more users, users kept coming back, opening more accounts, more developers building on top of it. But at the same time, we saw the value of Ethereum depleting over time. So it really, you know, we get very excited when adoption is rising and prices are falling. That's to us the best uh, place to, um, you know, start to, uh, uh, start to express our opinions. Um, and that's one of the investments that we made. And they're actually going through a big transition tomorrow. Um, and that should decide uh, big parts of the future of Ethereum. Excellent. That's really fascinating, right? So you're, the fundamentals, obviously, like you said, adoption is everything. And so when you're seeing, you know, the general market fall, let's say in crypto world at times, but you're seeing the adoption and the users go up, you're saying, hey, the value is there. Otherwise, the adoption, the users probably wouldn't be going up, right? Mm -hmm. So there's something there. And eventually, the market should catch up. Is that what you're saying there? Yeah, yeah. So basically, at the end of the day, fundamentals always win. Uh, you know, there's short periods of time or even long periods of time where fundamentals lose, but over the long run, fundamentals always win. And so we want to find these fundamental reasons why people keep coming back. And as long as technology is valuable to people and it improves their lives, it's valuable overall. So that's the only reason that any of this stuff is worth anything is if it's actually helping people and changing their lives. And we saw a reason, we, we got, saw a good reason to believe that users kept coming back and it was giving them a product or a service that they enjoyed and they found value in. Excellent. So let's talk about that adoption piece, right? Even for something like Plutus 21 Capital, as it applies to your business and helping people to become more users and more investors and with you, what's what's the biggest thing that you're focused on to increase the the uh, adoption um yeah we what we would love to do is uh, make our investments more accessible um so today the way that we're structured you know our investments are not very accessible to um, regular investors and so we would like to we're working through those things trying to figure out how can we not just um, invest in these, you know, really alternative, exciting asset classes, but also give more people access to, to what we do. Yeah, excellent. Very, very fascinating uh, world. And I like the way you said it, fundamentals always win, right? And I think it's when we have certainty of conviction of the investments that we're putting in, it's not the emotional highs and lows, right? It's, mm -hmm. you know, I'm certain this is, going to, this is going to win and this is going to do well because the fundamentals are there. I understand it. I see the vision, I see the out, I see the users, I see the fundamentals, and therefore I'm more likely to not be swayed by highs and lows of just the market moving. Any mm -hmm. thoughts on that, Hamiz? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the perfect example is, you know, the only people that held Amazon stock all the way from the IPO to today are, you know, Jeff Bezos and his mother, right? Like, and, and that's because, you know, there were many believers that came along the way, but they all got shaken out by the volatility. And that's what made Jeff Bezos the richest person on earth is because he had a level of conviction that nobody else had. Right. And he understood that the short term price movements didn't matter. He had a much bigger vision, much bigger, bigger target for the company. And so that tends to happen with uh, all companies. You think about Elon Musk, you think about Bill Gates, you think about any of these people. They have big believers, but even their own employees and family members don't stay uh, with them through the entire ride. And so volatility uh, is, is what you have to accept for exceptional returns. Volatility doesn't equal risk uh, necessarily. Uh, volatility is the cost of exceptional returns. Got it. Yeah, fascinating, right? The um, the yeah, even even the Bezos and even the Steve Jobs, right? They had a lot of a lot of people who doubt it, and and and, and uh, you know, it uh, it's a part of of any entrepreneur's you know dream that to, that certainty of conviction to stay in long enough and to keep building and keep keep building and uh, and succeeding so really cool so all right now let's shift a little bit to capital gains tax um in which um i'm curious on your take on some of the proposed changes and or just the world of crypto right because one of the biggest things we found is people hate to feel trapped by capital gains tax when they want to sell high right and and they want to they want to be able to capture some value so we're doing an ethereum case for for actually a couple who out of the bay area california and they bought it for around a hundred thousand and in 2017, they saw it shoot up to about six million, oh. and then they saw it kind of crash down, right? And then in 2000, you know, about um, about a, a you know a year, you know, eight months ago or so, five months ago, it shot up to like nine million, and then it shot up to like 13 million, right? <laughs> now it's you know it's from the 4,000 highs, let's say, to about 2,500 or so. And they're looking like, oh my gosh, like we wish we would have sold if we would have had a good, you know, long-term capital gains tax deferral option. So I'm curious for you and your, you know, friends, family, you know, clients, investors, what's the biggest frustration when it comes to capital gains tax deferral options when it comes to crypto? Um, yeah, I think that uh, people are still unsure what a uh, crypto asset even is. Um, you know, is it property? Is it treated like a security? Um, so I think most people are just treating it like a capital asset. Um, and that's what the lawyers and the, and the accountants are suggesting as well. Um, so th there's obviously a, a lot of uh, confusion about what type of asset it is, what type of strategies would apply to it, you know, what is a like kind exchange in, in a in a cryptocurrency, I don't know. Um, you know, are there wash trading rules or not? Are there securities? Are they not? So there's a lot of confusion, and I think the accountants and the lawyers are trying their best to uh, give like very conservative advice on it. Uh, but I think the biggest problem with this entire thing, and I, I think just generally in capital gains taxes, there's a lot of confusion, um, and most people don't know um, don't know very clearly what their options are. Yeah, hundred percent right. And that's by the way here, at capital gains tax solutions. We're trying to declutter the confusion and give you clear options for um, cryptocurrency for primary homes using the deferred sales trust uh, for businesses you can go to capital gains tax solutions.com that's capital gains tax solutions.com you can also search it on youtube as well to see some videos on all of this excellent all that being said hamiz are you ready for the lightning round absolutely yeah that's all right here we go knowing what you know now if you could go back to your 25 year old self what's the one golden nugget you make sure to tell yourself to do <laughs> the funny thing is I'm 25 right now. So I, I'll go back to my 15 year old self and say, you know, take it easy and, and, and just believe in yourself. Love it. Love it. Uh, second question. What's the number one book you've recommended or gifted the most in the past year? Um, not gifted, but there's this book about Jim Simons about how he built the Renaissance technology uh, technologies, you know, the, one of the most successful hedge funds in history. Um, so I really like that book. I think it's called The Man That Solved the Market. Cool. Uh, question three, what are you most curious about right now? I'm most curious about understanding how I can have a bigger impact. Biggest obstacle facing uh, cryptocurrency investors? Uh, regulation. Uh, the one regulation that if it were changed would change the most for the crypto uh, crypto world. Uh, I think if there was heavy handed regulation on uh, whether crypto is a security, that would probably be uh, the biggest thing. Yeah.
Got it. If they put that as a security, is what you're saying, it would be the biggest step back? Yeah, because right now it's uh, the argument is it's not a security. Right. It's property. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Got it. Uh, second to last question um, is um, the number one leadership quote or theme that you strive to live by when it comes to like building business or being an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, like, you know, a smooth uh, sea never made a skilled sailor. So the, the, the ups and downs are necessary to make you good at what you do. Mm -hmm. Love it. Uh, last question. Um, how do you stay centered in all your values and stay encouraged to reach for new heights after all your success? What are the, like, maybe the daily habits or the things that you do to make sure to keep yourself centered in your values? Yeah, I make sure I, you know, spend time with my family. Um, and that's that they're the, my source of motivation. So I make sure I spend time with them and then I make sure that I spend time with people that are not like me are maybe younger than me or older than me or have a different background than me. And that really helps me see things from a better perspective. Absolutely. Hamaz, I want, I want to thank you for being on the show for our listeners who want to get in touch with you. Would you remind them one last time where they can find you? Uh, P O U T U S two one.com. Awesome. That's Hamaz Awan, and that's, yeah, Plutus21.com. Hamaz, thank you for being on the show. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, a bit about your story. Uh, I want to thank you for um, being an entrepreneur, right, and starting a big things with blockchain technology and helping others invest, create, and preserve more wealth. Um, I want to encourage you to keep doing more of that, and I want to also thank our listeners for listening to another episode of the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast. As always, we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax referral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy. And using a proven tax referral strategy, such as the Deferred Sales Trust to defer taxes, capital gains taxes on the sale of cryptocurrency, primary homes, businesses, is the best ways to grow your wealth and uh, defer tax. So we want you to encourage you to go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to learn more about all of that and um, share this with somebody. We're also streaming on expertcresecrets.com. So you can learn, if you're in the commercial real estate brokerage world, you can learn more about how to use the Deferred Sales Trust to grow your business as well. Thanks so much, everyone, for listening out there. We so appreciate you. 